All right, YouTube, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another golf major video. Today, we are looking at the 152nd British Open at Royal Troon here. What we're going to do in today's video is we're going to talk about the course. I'm going to kind of give you what I believe is important for these players to focus on at the course. Then we'll go through the players list and obviously the um, the guys that are planning on teeing off here on the weekend. And then I'll dig into the guys that I think fit the bill for this course. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into that. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. We do have a nice little flyover here uh, to kind of give you an idea of what this course is like. So yeah, why not? Let's jump right in here. You'll see that it does. It looks pretty open. Obviously, you're not going to want to be hitting into uh, these hazards or wastelands or anything like that. But this course isn't going to be your easy off the tee type course, even though that may look like it. You'll see a lot of these um, pot bunkers in the fairway. And then greens are very, very guarded by those same exact bunkers. So... First and foremost, the two things that we're looking at here are going to be driving accuracy. Distance is still going to play a part because we do have some long approach shots here, but uh, even look at just number two, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I believe maybe eight and gets green side, but seven pot bunkers in the fairway. So driving accuracy is going to be massive. Hit fairway percentage as well. And it's not necessarily uh, the idea of being able to hit the driver accurately, even though that's huge. It's going to be able to be smart about your landing areas. If your driver's going to to carry 300 and the, you know the fairway is 15 yards wide at 300 can you pull back to a three wood hit it just as accurately into a much bigger landing area potentially but by doing so, you're going to give yourself some longer approach shots. So we have that built out into the model as well. But if I were to give, and you could probably even get that sense here as we see this flyover, if I were to give this course sort of three things to focus on, driving accuracy, green accuracy and then also around the green if you do get into trouble or you miss one of these very very they are very very small greens can you get up and down for par or if it's a par five can you get up and down for birdie and not make many mistakes so driving accuracy uh distance helps but driving accuracy is big time here can you hit these approach shots to the screen because look at how guarded they are we're yet to see a hole that is not guarded we're honestly kind of into the easier part of the course right now it doesn't get too difficult until i would say uh, midway through that you know front nine so we're going to start seeing even t more tough ones here postage stamp like a lot of tough greens like look at that could you play golf at this freaking course but um anyways driving this uh driving accuracy those approach shots because if you do have to pull back on the driver or something like that you're gonna have a longer approach shot and then being able to work around the green like look at this if you miss anywhere on this green can you make a score from there? That is what we're focusing on um, in terms of our bet the number model. Now, what I will say is putting's obviously going to be huge in a major, and more often than not, a guy that wins a major uh, is on fire putting, right? But whether it's Royal Troon or just U.S. Uh, excuse me, British Opens in the past, putting isn't necessarily like the end all be all. You could see a guy get hot, and that's kind of what I'm saying. But it's not necessarily like the traditional great putter that comes in and has an advantage here. So uh, in terms of correlating that to winners, I actually kind of left putting on the back burner. I think I only said strokes gain putting versus the field as a five percent sort of edge. So. Keep that in mind. It's definitely going to be off the tee, approach, around the green. And then putting, if you're a good putter, it helps. I don't think it's going to kill you if you are not. So let's jump into our custom model here. Um, and you can see pretty much what we've said. Now, I've weighed these appropriately as to what I think. Um, but off the tee, very important. Hit fair percentage and driving distance, obviously going to be in there. We did weigh um, you know, the hit fair percentage a little bit more uh, heavy, I guess. Strokes gains on the approach. And then I even broke out these approach shots because, like I said, if you want to hit the bigger part of the fairway, it may involve you, you know, stepping back on something a little bit, uh, hitting it 40 yards shorter than you normally would. Then you're going to leave yourself with a little bit longer of an approach, whether it's longer on a par four or, you know, trying to go for it on par five, that type of thing. And then around the green, we definitely weighed pretty strongly. Strokes gain punting, like I said, I think we only threw in like 5% here. But let's look at some of the favorites. And then you can see some of the guys that I've starred are guys that I do like this week. So we'll kind of break them out as well. So Scotty, obviously going to be a guy that's worth considering every single week but these outright numbers don't look all that great and honestly he looks pretty good he's either middle of the road or great you know number one in the field in terms of strokes gained approach straight up um in his last 20 rounds uh you know compared to everybody else but the strokes gained on the approach from 135 to 174 do look pretty bad but again this is freaking scotty scheffler no reason to totally fade him i just don't know if i want to include him uh based on that price now rory is definitely a guy that i could get behind here um i don't like his price and obviously there's a lot of off 
course stuff going on for Rory. And he's talked about how, you know, this may be the last year that he really cares about golf before taking maybe a little step back and all that. So Rory, maybe his head's not there, but you could see last two times here um, at the British third and tied six he's doing a lot that we need driving distance accuracy um you know fairly good approach he's the top 23 in the field not from these two specific areas but strokes gained around the green looking pretty good as well Xander, another guy worth consideration. I think Morikawa, um, odds-wise, could be a sleeper in terms of this big four here. You can get him for top 10 for plus 160. That's a big jump from that plus 125 of Xander. Um, and then uh, Oberg Ludwig here, obviously a guy that you can consider, but he doesn't really stand out in many of these categories, right? And then the last one we'll dive into here before we get into my favorites, because this is obviously one of the favorites. Uh, look at what we've broken out. Now, what I do here is I plug into this bet the number model which is a great site. I'm not even affiliated with them. We can put in what we want this course to, to uh, you know, or what we want this model to focus on, and then it spits out players, okay? So we're not sitting here saying, oh, I like this player. And I'm like, Bryson checks every damn near box except for the hit fair percentage, but if there's anyone in the field that may have the club head speed to handle, whether it's those wastelands on the side, the marsh, uh, maybe the bunkers too, you probably just have to chip out of those anyways, but um, if there's anyone that have the speed to be able to do it and make it seem like it's fairway when it's not fairway it's Bryson so that's okay and then he's driving distance one obviously on the approach is great from these two longer approaches fantastic around the green fourth so Bryson obviously probably going to be in a lot of people's cards uh this weekend and to me I could see it top 10 is as far as I'd go I'd love to say I love Bryson right I'd love to sit here and be like oh he's going to win another major or top five but you're asking for a lot for a guy that just won the U.S. Open so maybe top 10 is as far as I'd go with Bryson uh uh, sprinkle on top five. I don't think he wins it at 18 to one, but be pretty cool if he did. Um, all right, let's dive into the guys that I like here. We'll kind of start at the top. We already talked about a couple of them, and then we'll get into some sleepers and guys that I really do like. So we talked about Rory Morikawa as well as Bryson. One of my favorite plays this week, and I love that you can get plus money here at top 20. Again, keep an eye on the pinned comment, guys, for what I'm actually rolling with myself. I'm hoping that the information shared in this video does help you guys make some informed decisions yourself. But if you just want to ride with me or fade me, all of the plays that I'm rolling with will be listed out in the pinned comment. But Tier will have in here from the model perspective like for, i told you how we build this model take out my favorites right if we just go model rank he's actually listed as the second best option here so i had to to hammer him in terms of a favorite i like this spot for him um looking at what he can kind of bring to the table uh strokes gained off the tee we love to see 15th best in the field in terms of hitting the fairway, driving accuracy, driving distance top 25 as well, checking off the boxes for those two specific yardages that we have here, um, and then also around the green, 6th best guy in the field, I like to see that, and he fits the mold for what I said about, you don't need to be a great putter, like it's not red, it's not deep red, anything like that, like, you know, it's just a decent enough spot. And three of the last four um, opens here, he's been able to pull out a top 20 finish, which top 20 plus 120 for him. I could ladder him uh, maybe top 20, top 10, and potentially plus 550, I think has some value at the top five spot. Uh, Tommy Fleetwood, much like um, the reason why initially Tyrrell hadn't caught my eye, one very good finishes here at the Open. You can't ignore that. Uh, U.S. Open coming off of a tied 16, um, and his numbers are pretty damn good, right? Similar to what we're looking at for Tyrrell Hatton here, um, but he doesn't have. He's not flooding, you know, all of those those stats that we're looking at with green. But I don't see any red there. Do you? And then Brooks, another guy that I guess we just have to keep an eye on. Um, Brooks turns it up in majors. Uh, where I would probably go with this is top 20, nothing beyond. Um, but he does have that dog in him. And you know what? Some people hate Brooks. Some people love Brooks. He, he's had his ups and downs with golf for sure. Um, some might say when he went over to live, you know, things maybe got a little bit less precious to him in a sense, but always turns it on for majors. Uh, and <laughs> look at that. Even after going to live, look what he's done, right? Um, we get into two what I would consider fairly decent sleepers here. Joaquin Neiman. Uh, to be able to get plus money at top 30 is great. I could ladder him to top 10. Uh, he has that strokes gained uh, from the 175 to 225 down, obviously, around the green looking good. Um, strokes gained off the tee, tremendous. We don't have hit fair percentage, but driving distance and strokes gained on the approach, also green. Strokes putting. That is tough to see. And also his recent history here at Opens, also tough to see. But in terms of how many, what is that? That's five five greens compared to one red. I'm willing to kind of for, forego this, I guess. But nonetheless, um, Joaquin Neiman, you know, definitely has some decent odds here. And then, uh, you know, Byung-Yun Han. 
here. I like this spot for him as well. I mean, hit fair percentage is so, so terrible, but he's going to hit it far. Um, he's great at these approach shots, and he's actually had decent success at open. So for a guy that is 120 to 1 here, uh, I think this is a nice little spot. A top 40 spot for on could be a little move that we look at. So to recap here, um, I'll kind of give you, and I, by the way, guys, the biggest thing that I like before we recap what we just went through, I love matchups in golf. That is my bread and butter. Obviously, you probably know me as an NFL, an NBA, an MLB sports better, right? So to be able to kind of have those, you know, one-on-one -on -one type matchups is crucial in golf because you're you're getting rid of the rest of the field. Like, even a guy, if he goes out there, you have him top five, and he plays phenomenal, the best golf of his life, what if there's five guys that play better, right? But if you go matchup, it's one-on-one -on -one, uh, for the tournament, so I do like that, FYI. So, like, being able to get good odds on some guys, like maybe Hatton has a good odds matchup um, for his matchup for the tournament, that type of thing. But anyways, Rory, it's worth considering. I'm going to kind of give you a blurb about what I think about each of these guys. Morikawa, I definitely would consider maybe a top 10 play, but I don't know if he makes a final card, Bryson, ladder to that as, as much as you want. I'd probably go, you know, just throw him on top 10 and, and you know, set it and forget it. Um, Tyrrell Haddon, I, I'm willing to ladder as far as it goes. I mean, the fact that I could go uh, top 20, top 10 and get some great odds there. Same thing with Fleetwood. I like the odds. Um, not as much as I like Hatton, but I don't mind Fleetwood. Brooks... I just couldn't ignore him. I couldn't ignore his numbers, um, but not exactly someone that I'm willing to wager all that much today. And then Neiman and Jan, like these are two guys at top 30-ish, you know, maybe a swing at top 20, definitely matchup looks, I think could be good plays uh, this weekend. So guys, that is what we have for this tournament. Um, if you have not checked out BetMGM yet, you need to go and do so. They have two amazing deals and this is how you can use them kind of together, right? So to sign up, uh, you're going to hit the link in the description as well as the pinned comment and you You'll get $1,500 back if your first, up to $1,500 back if your first bet does not hit. They give it to you in bonus bets over a course of seven days, uh, which is really cool. So if you put a $1,500 wager on something and it loses, you're going to get a bunch of different, you know, $25, $50, $100 bonus bets coming your way. And what's great is that for the open here, they're going to give you another bet insurance. So a second free bet there, you get your stake back in bonus bets if it does not come through. So opt into that one. Go sign up for MGM with the link in the pinned comment. It's the the most underrated sports book, in my opinion. Go ahead and check it out. But guys, it's going to wrap it up for today's video. Best of luck betting this. Somehow, some way, we've had such a good golf season. Um, and mostly matchups. We've like missed like three matchups this entire year doing majors and elevated events. So uh, having a blast doing these golf videos. More to come as well. But I appreciate everyone that caught this one. Go ahead and comment. We're 13 minutes into the video. Comment, uh, I guess, lucky number 13. Comment 13 if you made it this far into the video. As always, let me know what you guys are rolling with as well. And we'll catch you guys in the next one, all right? Peace out.